Hey, I want to ask for the Holy Spirit to really lead me and really just move during this time, God, so that we could enter in. So, Father, I just come by the blood of Jesus into your holy of holies. I pray, God, that your word would come with anointing, with authority, with the power of the Holy Spirit. God, I ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit right now in this place. God, we don't just want to read about Pentecost. We don't just want to celebrate a Pentecost Sunday. Father, I pray, even as I'm preaching, let the fire of the Holy Spirit fall. So we're going to read that in a, in a couple minutes, but, but I, I felt drawn to the theme of God's fire. We know in the book of Hebrews it says that our God is a consuming fire. He, he came on Mount Sinai and the mountain shook and there was the smoke and the fire. And whenever John the Baptist came, whenever he came preaching and calling people to repentance... He said, there's one coming after me whose sandals I'm not even unworthy to untie. And all throughout the ministry of Jesus, and especially toward the end of his ministry, as he was preparing to go to the cross, and then he knew he would ascend to heaven. Think of the magnitude of that statement that Jesus just said, it's to your advantage that I go. I wish I could have you know, walked with Jesus like the disciples did when he was in the flesh, if I could have been able to witness him and see his miracles and watch him turn the water and the wine and heal people and open blind eyes and cast out demons and listen to his teachings, that would have been amazing. He said what we have today is actually better than Jesus himself in the flesh because we have the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, if you have a Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2. We'll actually, we'll actually start in chapter 1 for a second. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Like there's, there's still quite not, not quite understanding where, where he's going. And he says, it's not for you to know those times and those seasons. But verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. They had the message, but they didn't have the helper, the empowerer, the Holy Spirit, who was going to give them the grace to actually fulfill the assignment. You know, it's interesting that the scripture says that Jesus appeared to 500 people. In, in Corinthians 15, it talks about how after his resurrection, he appeared to that many, so many people he appeared to. In the upper room, there was 120. It makes me wonder what happened to those other several hundred. Maybe they thought, well, I'm just going to go do it on my, I'm just going to go do it because I have the message. I, what if, you know, there's a 10 day period between this time and then. Uh, and then the day of Pentecost. In verse 14 it says, They continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. They knew the Holy Spirit was going to come. And they knew it must be to such a degree that they would know when it happened. And then we see what happens in, in chapter 2. The fulfillment of this promise on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It's like, what, what is going on? What in the... And then they get filled with the Holy Spirit and they begin to speak in languages they never learned by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Spirit's giving them utterance, the Holy Spirit's poured out and the church is born that day. There is no version of the church in the Bible that does not have supernatural power. There's no version of Christianity in the scriptures that doesn't include the power of God. Even if we see it in our lives or see it around us, that When Jesus wanted to initiate his first church plant, his first church planting initiative, he called a meeting together of his apostles, of his disciples, of his core team, and he gave them a strategy. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was the church planting strategy of Jesus. He didn't give them a hundred page manual. He didn't give them a marketing strategy. The church planning strategy of Jesus was the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is all they would need to fulfill the assignment. We've learned how to grow a big church where God is not even present. And we, you could grow a huge church and God is not even involved in it. 
When, when Jesus gave them the one thing that was going to be needed, God himself in their midst. He will give an impossible assignment. And the only promise he'll give you is, I'll be with you, his presence. He gives the great commission, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, right? And then healing the sick, preaching the gospel. If what we are trying to accomplish can be done in human strength, it's not God's assignment. And so he gives us an impossible assignment that can only be fulfilled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when I encountered God 20 years ago, I had a radical conversion experience, my true salvation experience. I'd grown up in church in a great family. And I began to, God began to lead me into a deeper place of prayer and hunger and seeking Him. And I had a baptism of the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And I began to be led into deliverance and you know, all this whole journey. Don't you know the price that people paid for this expression of Christianity to be released, restored in the earth? God's been restoring things to his church for, for years, for centuries. Ever since the Protestant Reformation, there's been movements where God is he's restoring certain truths and certain doctrines and certain moves of his spirit. And in the early 1900s, there was something called the Azusa Street Revival in California. And it, it released across the world. And it, it brought this, the church into this revelation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues and how this is still happening today. Not that no one ever did before that, but now it became more of a widespread move of the Spirit. Every single move of God, if it does not experience renewal, will end up being an empty shell of what it once was. The church still has a theology of the Holy Ghost, but it has no living consciousness of his presence and power. So there's a 50-day period from the resurrection to the day of Pentecost. For 50 days, the facts of the gospel were complete, but no conversions were recorded. And there's going to be persecution that comes, but I'm going to give you boldness in the midst of the persecution. I'm just kind of trying to be led by the, by the Holy Spirit as I preach. But I'm going to talk about a couple things about the fire of God. What is a baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire? It removes the imperfections. On that day of Pentecost, when that fire came upon those disciples, you better believe that they were being purified. You better believe that, that there's certain attributes, certain, I mean, just think about the disciples throughout the Gospels and just, you know, they were so competitive. They're always, you know, Peter's the one that pulls out the sword and tries to slice off the guy's ear. You know, and maybe it was a good act of bravery, but he didn't understand what he was doing, what was going on. It says it cuts them to the heart and 3,000 come into the kingdom on one day. Sometimes self is still reigning too much in our life. And he wants to dethrone self so that Christ can be enthroned in us. You see, he wants to, he wants to remove self and replace it with himself. And he wants to let that fire burn up any impurity. He calls us to that life of consecration, holiness, purity, so that we can actually be a light to the world around us. Number two, the second thing that the fire of God brings is passion. The assignment he's given us is impossible to attain without the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like when Jesus looked at his disciples and they said, Lord, there's 5,000 people plus women and children. Send them away so that they can go get some food to eat because they're hungry. Sometimes we're trying to feed the 5,000 with our five loaves and two fish instead of coming to the Lord with, with what little we have and giving it to him, putting it in his hands. And letting him break us, letting him bless us with his power so that we can then go out and actually with the anointing and power of the Spirit meet the needs of the people that are here, that are around us. We need the power of God in our lives because the assignment that he's given us is impossible. The conversion of a soul is impossible without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not just about them receiving the right information. They need that convicting power of the Holy Spirit to turn their heart, to bring them to repentance. The healing of the sick. And he's one of the main intercessors that really carried the Azusa Street Revival in his belly. I think it was about a year and a half of intensity of prayer burdens until that thing was released. Throughout the Bible, we see that the fire falls on a sacrifice. And so, God, I ask right now, because of your mercy, because of your promises, because of the blood of Jesus, I ask over Reach Church, God, over this congregation, over this people in this room, would you answer by fire? Would you let there be encounters with you in this room, God, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire? God, let the fire of the Holy Spirit fall, a fresh baptism. I'm going to release this hymn from William Booth as a, as a prayer over us. If you're being touched by the Lord or if you just feel God calling you to respond, you say, I want to lay my life 
on that altar to receive a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit.